Doomsday is coming. That is a fact, not a speculation. We know our sun will die in five billion years. So there is for sure a doomsday coming, but that is the doomsday most people don't have to worry about. So what do we have to worry about? If I list everything we have to worry about, this video will be 24 hours long and you would either fall asleep or turn to another channel. So, I will leave that to your imagination, but focus only on today's topic, ecological engineering. What is ecological engineering? According to Mitch, the design of sustainable ecosystems intends to integrate human society with its natural environment for the benefit of both. Great statement, but it sounds more like philosophy than science. Don't feel bad if you don't understand because I don't have a clue either. Mitch and Jurgensen realized that, so they issued a book to clarify it in 1989 and again in 2004 after the initial introduction in the 1980s. Basically, it means to restore our ecosystems. On my prior clean energy video, I mentioned about increased food production from the use of pesticides. How bad is it in America? Let me give you an example. The sweet, crunchy Washington apples. Do you know the industry was also almost destroyed by a moth till a pesticide came to the rescue? I mean, pesticides loaded with lead and arsenic. Now, the estimate cost of cleaning each acre is $1 million. And how many such acres are in the state of Washington? 187,000 acres. Do you know Washington State has already exempted all those farmers from any liability from those contaminants? In a way, they are victims too. It happened when people had little knowledge of pesticide side effects, and many of them have since suffered serious health consequences. But we have to deal with the problems, right? I don't know if it is safe to eat those apples, and I don't know if it is safe to live near the sites, but I do know many homes have been built at the sites of these former apple orchards. Question one, do you think the state of Washington can afford to pay the $187 million to clean up these sites? Question two, how many other states have the same problem? We have to find a cheaper solution or we will soon face the consequences of an action. Now, do you prefer to sit around and talk about what may kill us or talk about how we can get out of these troubles? I don't know about you, but I think we should see if there is a cleanup solution we can afford. You may have heard the quote, extreme situations require extreme measures. So what is the extreme measure I have in mind? It is a very precious food for our very precious friends. I mean the food pandas love most the bamboo. Will you be surprised if I tell you bamboo is actually a kind of grass? It is in the subfamily of the flowering Perinea evergreen, with the name of Poaceae. Some bamboos can grow three feet within a 24-hour period. That means one millimeter every 90 seconds. That is why Asian countries love bamboo. Half the work, but ten times the result. Bamboo shoots are a popular dish, and bamboo is widely used as a building material since it has a higher compressive strength than wood, brick, or even concrete, and tensile strength like steel. Bamboo is also used for decontamination. It is a process called phytoremediation. That means when certain plants working together with soil organisms can clean up the contaminants. It is especially useful on sites with heavy metals or toxic organic compounds. In some cases, the byproducts are harmless and valuable. 
One may question if bamboo, which thrives in Asia, can survive in Washington State. Don't worry. According to GardenGuides.com, they can. But even if they don't, bamboo is not the only choice to decontaminate a poisonous site. However, I do think bamboo is the best. How can it not be the greatest? If it is panda's favorite. Don't forget, bamboo is the fastest growing plant. Since the bamboo plants take in water and nutrients through their roots, transpire water through leaves, and then metabolize organic compounds like oil and pesticides, or they may absorb and bioaccumulate toxic trace elements like heavy metals, lead, cadmium, and selenium. In some cases, plants contain 1,000 times more metal than in the soil. Imagine cutting the contamination when you cut the crops. Fast, easy, and efficient. But why is this a good choice for the contamination in Washington State? Because phytoremediation is an affordable technology, and it is most useful when contaminants are near the roots. Although, personally, I would not eat Washington-grown bamboo shoots, I can see how this simple solution would benefit the farmers. They can use the equipment they already own and restore their once clean and fertile land. Other than phytoremediation, bioremediation can also degrade organic contaminants through soil microorganisms. Like certain mustard plants can remove metals like chromium, lead, cadmium, and zinc from contaminated soil. Some hydroponic plants can remove toxic metals from aqueous waste streams. This is done through the rhyosphere effect. Although bamboo sounds really good, please don't plant it in your backyard. It is too easy for green thumbs like yours. This is a serious subject, and you may think it is a joke for someone like me to publish a video like this. However, I hope by bringing awareness to these problems, people with advanced knowledge can share their knowledge and really solve the problems. We need to build a better tomorrow for our children. Thanks for watching. This is Ken Peters.